This is a revision video about the control of body temperature, or as we sometimes call it, thermoregulation. This comes up in AQA GCC Biology Unit 5, which is the homeostasis and response unit, and it's a triple only topic, so you don't need to do this if you're doing combined science. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain why body temperature control is necessary, describe how body temperature is monitored, and then list the ways in which the body responds to fluctuations in temperature. In the first video in this series, we met the concept of homeostasis, the regulation of the internal conditions of a cell or an organism to maintain the optimum conditions for function in response to internal and external changes using negative feedback loops. This includes controlling blood sugar, water levels, and of course, body temperature. Normal human body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius, although this does vary from person to person. If the body temperature rises too high or falls too low, then this can have serious implications for your health. The reason that the body temperature needs to be so closely controlled is because it's providing the optimum temperature for enzymes, the temperature at which they will work best. If the temperature gets too hot, as it may do if you have a particularly severe fever, then the enzymes can be denatured. This means that they're permanently bent out of shape and are unable to interact with their substrate. If the temperature is too cold, then it doesn't harm the enzymes, but it does make them less efficient. Body temperature in animals is regulated by a cluster of cells in the hypothalamus area of the brain called the thermoregulatory centre, or TRC for short. This cluster of cells contains receptors, which are cells that are sensitive to the temperature of the blood. So as the blood flows through the brain, it has its temperature taken. In addition to this, the skin contains temperature receptors, and these receptors again identify the change in temperature, and they send electrical impulses called nervous impulses to the thermoregulatory center using the sensory neuron pathway. If you've been listening so far, you should be able to answer these questions. Pause the video and write down an answer to each one. Temperature is monitored by the brain, and the part of the brain that does this is the thermoregulatory centre, and what it does is it takes the temperature of the blood. The cells in the skin that provide the information about temperature are receptor cells. If the body temperature rises too high or falls too low, then the body needs to act to mitigate this change. If the temperature is too hot, as may be the case if you're exercising, if your environment is too hot, or just if you have a temperature because you're ill, then one of the first things you can do is vasodilation. Vaso means anything to do with your blood vessels, and dilating is about opening up. It's the same word we use for how your pupils get very large if you're in a dark room. During vasodilation, the arterioles widen, and this allows more blood to flow through the capillary network that's near to the skin. These capillaries are already there, but now more blood is flowing through them, and this is why you turn red when you get hot. Because that blood is flowing close to the surface of the skin, it's easy for it to lose heat energy to the surroundings, and therefore your body is cooled down. The second thing your body can do to cool itself down is sweating. Sweat glands release sweat, which is mainly water, onto the surface of the skin, and then this sweat can absorb energy from the skin and evaporate. In doing so, it cools the body down. It's important for the sake of exams that you know that we're sweating a tiny bit all of the time. So in the exam, you need to say that as you get warmer, you sweat more to cool yourself down more. Here are some more questions to make sure that made sense. Pause the video and then we'll go through some answers. The process where water is lost is of course sweating, and it needs to be lost in order to cool the body down. On a hot day, because your body temperature is going to increase and you're going to need to cool down more, you will lose more sweat. Because the total amount of water that you lose in a day is unlikely to change, if you're sweating more than the amount of urine you produce will need to decrease. In response to the body temperature falling too low, there are three things that your body can do. The first one is vasoconstriction, which is the opposite of vasodilation. So rather than the arterioles widening so that more blood flows through the capillaries near to the skin, they constrict and tighten, which means that less blood can flow through those capillaries and therefore less heat is lost. The second thing your body can do is shivering. Shivering requires the muscles to contract and in order to get the energy to do this, they increase their rate of respiration. This releases energy and some of that energy is used to make the muscles contract, but some of it is lost as heat and therefore you warm up. The third thing that your body can do is to raise the hairs on your skin, which is why you get goosebumps. These hairs will then trap a layer of air close to your skin, which acts as a little bit of a blanket and helps to insulate you. 
Here's one more question to check your understanding. This would come up in the exam as a six mark extended response question. All of these extended response questions are level marked, which means you don't get one point per true thing you say. You have to meet certain criteria to jump into the next level. So here you would probably get capped at two out of six marks if you only discussed cooling down and didn't mention heating up at all. The mark scheme would say something like for five or six marks, which is level three, you need to have written a detailed account which covers temperature detection and body heating and body cooling. So pause the video, give yourself six minutes and see what you can come up with to answer this question. In this question, we're asked to describe how the body keeps a stable temperature of about 37 degrees C. Although the thermoregulatory centre is named in the question, there is some more information that I can add about the detection of body temperature, which I should get credit for. For instance, I can talk about the fact that there are temperature receptors in the thermoregulatory centre and that they're detecting the temperature of the blood. I can also talk about the role of the skin in this because the receptors in the skin send nerve impulses to the thermoregulatory centre about the temperature of the skin. Then I can start to look at how the body copes if it gets too hot or too cold. So if the temperature is too high, then the arterioles dilate, and this is called vasodilation. This leads to more blood flowing near to the skin and therefore more heat being lost. Also, sweat glands release more sweat. Remember, we said before it's really important you talk about sweating increasing, not just starting. Then the body is cooled by the evaporation of that sweat. It's not just sweating that makes you cooler, it's when that water takes the energy from your skin and turns into vapour and leaves. If the temperature becomes too low, then the arterioles constrict in what we call vasoconstriction. Therefore, less blood flows near to the skin and less heat is lost. Finally, muscles shiver to release heat energy. And they do this by respiring more. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that a useful introduction to the regulation of body temperature. If you did find it useful, then please don't forget to like and subscribe using the button below.